uh, Ryan and I, we just discussed this before we started officially this, this meetup conversation. And uh, Ryan said something like, oh, why did I pick this negative question as a topic? And I said, I don't think it's so negative. Uh, I'm, it makes it's a, it, for me, to me, it's a hopeful question. You know, um, and let me remind you of the topic of today's meetup here. What's holding you back from bringing beta to your workplace or your clients? And it's interesting how different we might, how differently we might feel about this question. You know, but so uh, here's the thing: what's holding us back? And of course, this might seem a negative question. And and let me start on a positive note. I think we've kind of come a long way as a community since 2008, yeah? I don't think at all that we have failed or that there's something negative uh, about the Beta Codex community. I will, I will make some critical remarks. And of course, do not take them personally. Everybody watching this or attending this, you are excluded from the criticism, of course, <laughs> yeah? So by, by, right, by participation, you are excluded, from, exempt from the criticism, of course. I'm not criticizing to criticize you. But, but here's the story, here's the backdrop, and this has everything to do with time travel and history. When we started this thing, Beta Codex Network, Valeria and I, um, in 2008, 14, 14 years ago, yeah? or as the Americans would say, 14 fucking years ago, yeah? <laughs> 14 years ago we started this, and at the time we understood what the Beta Codex was, I think. Uh, Valeria and I, and a couple of others who, who benevolently watched us doing this, founding this group, um, I think we had a good understanding of the model, beta codex model, as you might call it, yeah, or the construct of this beta codex, beta kind of organization. We had a good understanding. We had the principles already articulated. We, of course, inherited the principles from the beyond budgeting movement, uh, which had started this whole research work around the beyond budgeting model, beta codex model, um, 15 years earlier, even, you know, in 1998 or so. So when we founded the Beta Codex Network, we had a thorough understanding, I think, of the model. And why did we have this thorough understanding of the model? Not just because we had the, the principles, but also because we had a good bunch of cases, you know, great cases like Southwest Airlines, Toyota, Handelsbank, and Aldi, the M. Dugarie Markt. So we had the cases, we had the understanding of the model, everything was bright. We had a bright future, but no present because nobody could do this. And I think this changed. Now, I think we have a, now 14 years on, you know, in 2022, almost 2023. Um, now we also understand, we understand the model plus we understand how the how of transform, transformation, the how of transforming to beta. And if you, if you look back in time at history, uh, the previous movements like the socio-technical systems movement, um, uh, that was very strong in the United States or uh, systems thinking very strong also in Europe or beyond budgeting. Uh, members of those movements could talk forever about this thing, but they couldn't make it happen. They couldn't, they couldn't do it in practice. And um, do not believe anything that I'm saying, of course, this is again, or should be our, our um, an important motto for us. Don't believe what I'm saying, but right now, for example, Silke is doing um, this kind of transformation with a client in Austria and it's working. So um, uh, it's a company that just started this year and they are, uh, they are having their second open space uh, to conclude that transformation in just a couple of days. So today we can say that, okay, we know how the model works. We know how beta organizations or agile organizations, if you want to call them like this, how they work. And we know how transformation works, which is, I think it's it's a new era, a new world really. And uh, I think we've come a long way also in articulating the model better, explaining it better. Huh? You might remember um, from other sessions or, or talks of mine that I like to say that everybody wants beta, secretly, secretly, everybody wants beta. <laughs> Um, but we also have to explain not just beta, but why alpha is such a terrible and horrific and 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 motivation destroying, potential destroying thing. So I think selling the love for beta is not enough. We also have to um, make people understand why uh, alpha organization is really despicable, why command and control is despicable and ineffective and cannot be made work, you know, in in a complex work, in a complex world. So uh, we've kind of come a long way since 2008, uh, a few milestones I think that we have achieved, a few ticks that we can you know, make. Beta is now de facto open source. It wasn't back in 2008, but it is explained. Um, everybody can take, take a look. Everybody can publish about it, uh, create 
products or services around it. That I think is a, is a little bit of an advancement. Um, we have social technologies uh, that are reliable. Uh, we second now we call them work the system um, social social technologies like open space beta, self structure design, relative targets. They can be used by anyone. We have learning. We have created learning methods and learning platforms like Comenius. Yeah. So um, I think as a as a movement, we now have much more to go for. You know, we have we have we have created the the, the ground. We have done the groundwork, I think, to to make um, beta and beta codex happen in practice. Yeah, to make it also work for us as members uh, of this community, to make it happen as a as a way of um, making a living. Yeah, which is very important as well. If you want to have a striving movement, I think then. Uh, you must also allow for members of the movement to make a living from the topic, from the from the work around this uh, concept. And this, I think, is another case. We now have the, the understanding, we have the transformation method, we have the, you know, all these so social technologies like self-structure design, which um, people can make a living from in many, many ways. Yeah. So let me get back to the questions. We have achieved a lot, but what's holding us back? That's the main topic for today. And I want to make some... Uh, offer some axioms or some questions to you, but we don't have to agree with them. One of the things that I thought about two days ago um, that are holding us back are conspiracy theories. And I think that's an interesting thought. At least for me, it's an interesting thought. I think it has resonated with Peter as well when I wrote about that on uh, on, 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 on Mastodon. We have, we, I, I think one of the things that's holding us back is conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories might be Managers don't care about beta organization or self-organization or agility. They want, they are clinging to powers. That's a conspiracy theory. Of course, there's no such thing as all managers be, being evil. When they, when normal people grow into becoming managers or executives, they go to the dark side and it, everything that's they, you know, when we say they, they don't understand it. They're not interested. They don't come to our conferences. They are not at this meetup. All those would be conspiracy theories. I, I don't, don't think any of that is correct. It's just a way of us blaming others for our own, whatever it is, hopelessness or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's holding us back, blaming others. Uh, oh, the authorities in Germany will not allow us to have a bank that's beta. That's, of course, utter bullshit, you know. Authorities do not want alpha or, or command and control organization to happen. There are laws that sometimes we must be a little bit smarter than the law, of course, but we should always be compliant as beta organizations. Um, and, and alpha organizations are sometimes also, they have to, to find their ways to, to interpret the, the rules, the existing rules. But nobody, no government, um, no manager, I think few managers are clinging to power. Yeah? So, this, so there's a lot of Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories abound. You know, there are also theory X beliefs. We talked about a lot about that in the past, um, over the last couple of years. I think that if we think that other people are have to be extrinsically motivated, that they don't want to make an effort, that have, they have to be controlled or uh, put put to fear and so on, we then we we will not change anything. So that's holding us back. I also think there are a couple of other beliefs that are holding us back. For example, a lack of belief that things can change. Uh, I read The Economist frequently, and in The Economist, they always write about this. You know, there's a, many of us in their heart cannot believe that things are changing. Even if the evidence is overwhelming that things are changing everywhere, you know, not just in Russia and China for the worse, but also in many, many ways for good, you know. Some people even think that democracy is vanishing. That's not the case. We have countries becoming more democratic all the time. So there's evidence of all kinds that things are changing. So this is important for us as a community. We have to start believing that beta organizations can be brought about. Otherwise we will not change a thing. Yeah. Of course, I cannot sell this belief to you. You cannot, I, nobody can force you to believe that. I believe in that, I hope. I hope you can learn to believe it. Yeah. I think there's also uninformed disbelief. Yeah. Um, oh. I do not understand how beta works, so I don't believe in it. It cannot work because I don't understand it. That's a very com common thing, I think. Silke and I, we find that a lot in our consulting work. You know, we, uh, But that can be, you know, disbelief like that, naive disbelief can be suspended and we can educate people to learn about beta and understand it and then it might click and people can 
start not just believing it, but also doing it. And here's a little bit of critique now. And of course, everybody here present and watching this maybe later on YouTube, you are excluded from the critique. But I think in our community, we have a little bit of a problem too. We are not learning fast enough. We are not learning fast enough. Now, of course, you are all exempt from the critique. Obviously, I, I do not, I'm not meaning you. But uh, we could learn faster. And there are some things that we need to learn as a community if we, um, if we want to make a living from this, if we want to help the world you know, transform, help organizations adopt beta. Uh, some of us have to learn about consulting. Uh, I, I had to learn this 20 years ago. Uh, it was hard for me to learn to be a consultant. And I'm happy that I do not travel, have to travel back in time observing me as a consultant 20 years ago. I think I made the most horrible mistakes. Yeah, but we have to learn this kind of thing. If this kind of thing, we have to learn how to maybe some of us have to learn how to talk about beta, how to write about beta, how to publish around beta, how to train things that are related, how to, you know, help clients as a consultant. I think we have to learn. So some of us might, if you if we want to advance, some of us have to learn more thoroughly. I think about the concepts like cell structure design, open space beta. I can only recommend you to learn. But uh, it's our decision, of course, as individuals. Um, I believe that us as a community, we are not yet working together. Yeah, I think, um, and this is something that happened in the Beyond Budgeting Movement um, 20 years ago when I joined the Beyond Budgeting Movement. We were a bunch of um, directors at the time we were called, which is part of the non-open source part of that movement. Um, and we just didn't work together. And I think we are... Most of us are not not yet, we are not colluding enough to do things together. Uh, I can say that this is slowly changing. For example, Peter and I, we have started doing some work together recently on a client and so on. We are doing this now. So I think that's, that can happen, but um, I think we could, we could collude much more, do much more things together, like research as well, writing, publishing, helping each other to, to, to get, you know, to get to acquire clients and so on. So I think we could do, more working together, we could um, we could share more, we could explore more, we could research more, we could articulate more around beta. And I can only invite you to do this. Uh, I think the time is there here, you know, to do that. Um, I think uh, the charm of many alpha tools is wearing off. So it becomes more and more visible. I think that now is the time for complexity, robust organizations for beta, you know, or for a more robust view on agile. Um, so I think that currently we do not share enough. We do not articulate and talk enough. We do not propose beta enough to clients. I think we can all do that. Um, or we can learn to do that. Of course, uh, this meetup is also to discuss, should we do that? What's, what's holding us back personally? But I think as a movement, we can improve and maybe as individuals as well. Yeah. I am totally convinced that making a living with beta, making building a career on beta is possible now, now that um, the foundations are here. And, um, but to that, we have to study, to engage with each other, to learn uh, the professions like consulting that might be needed to, to, to make a step forward, yeah? So um, yeah, thank you for enduring this little bit of critique and critical reflection that I have tried. Uh, I, I'm looking very much looking forward to the discussions in this, uh, session, of course, and and uh, Ryan told me that we have plans to do more meetups uh, in English uh, in 2023. So I'm looking forward to those conversations as well.